YouTubes! Welcome back, Haunt Fam. So today I want to make a groundbreaker uh, for the graveyard. I got these two knuckleheads last year at Spirit Halloween. These are two of the hanging zombies for like, I think they're 60, 70 bucks. I either got them on clearance or I used a coupon and I got two of these guys. They're hard plastic, so they're the perfect candidate. So uh, let's get cracking. Okay, YouTube, so out of our two uh, hanging zombies here from Spirit, I think I'm going to go with Longneck here. Uh, Zombie Zed looks pretty cool. He's got a lot of cool details, so we'll use him on another project later. Uh, this guy we can really dial up. And the reason I like this guy is because he's hard plastic. So I want to I want to give you guys some options. You know I love to give you guys options. Uh, any head will do. You guys can use anything. Uh, you can use a plastic head from like Home Depot. This is a zombie head from last year. He came with the hands and feet. He was just a groundbreaker. Or uh, you guys can go with a mask. And I've got a simple hard plastic mask right here. This is like a ground fogger or something like that from Home Depot a couple of years ago. You guys can easily take a milk jug, put a hard plastic mask on it, put a hood on it or a cape or something like that. Pal, you're in business. you got a hard plastic mask that will withstand the elements. What you do not want to use is latex. Okay, so I've got a latex Zagoni mask here. It's got a little bit of fiber on the back a little bit of fabric. Uh, over time, the sun is gonna beat on the latex and eat it and destroy it, so I'm not a fan of using latex outside. And so our guy's gonna be outside with Indiana weather, frost and snow and ice and heat waves. So latex, not your friend if we're outside. So uh, let's get some PVC out. Let's start making a frame for our body. Okay, YouTubes, for our ground breaker, we're gonna use a simple PVC joint. You guys can get them anywhere, hardware store, whatever. Uh, we're not gonna use our spider hill joints on this guy. We're gonna keep it simple. He's a simple ground breaker. Although if you wanna use the spider hill joints, if you got them, you can. I do have a video on this for those who are interested. Uh, they take one inch PVC. You can adjust them to whatever length or to whatever angle you want and move your props around from year to year. I'll go ahead and link this video below in the description or I'll pin it in the comments, whatever for you guys, but uh, we're gonna keep it simple. Like I said, we're gonna use one inch PVC. It's dense, it's thick enough to be outside. It's strong, but it's not over bulky. So I did cut two six inch pieces and these guys are gonna be our shoulders. We're gonna start with just a simple four way. Although you could do two down pipes if you wanted to. Uh, we're gonna make these shoulders for now. And we're not going to glue anything just yet. I don't think there will really be a need to. In fact, probably won't even have to. Uh, for his shoulders, I'm going to use probably 290s or maybe even a 45. I don't know. It depends. We'll play with them a little bit. That's why I don't want to glue anything because I want to keep this guy where he's uh, movable so we can pose him however we want. And at the end, if we decide we want to glue him or we just want to run a simple screw to the backside, we can do that too. Uh, I'm doing a cut of spine for him, but since he does have a long neck, I'm going to make this our neck section. And this I probably should glue, but again, I can always run a screw through or something like that. No big deal. So I think I'm going to go ahead and cut a spine. I'll probably cut it a little bit long. Uh, and then I'll come back and I'll mark the pieces. And we'll uh, get some arms cut for this guy. Okay, YouTubes. So I thought I'd disassemble a long neck here and check his neck to make sure he had enough pipe sticking in through his head. I took off his uh, crappy clothes. And to my surprise, he had a bar running across the top, which I cut. So we're going to pop his arms out. Get rid of that. Uh, get rid of that. So he's actually got two little holes on the side of his arms, which is actually pretty cool. So I'm wondering if we can just disassemble this since we haven't glued anything yet. At least our neck piece is going to be too long now. Uh, but we could probably stick our T right up in here and put our shoulders in. So I'm going to go ahead and rough out a neck measurement on this guy. Probably, yeah, I think if I take maybe inches off this guy. We'll have our next section. We'll rebuild them and uh, we'll put them together. And I did go ahead and cut a 15 inch spine for him. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble his top half and his spine. And we come back, we're going to cut some arms and start getting a pose for this guy. Okay, YouTube. So it worked out pretty good. I went ahead and used the pieces from his shoulders, a little padding, and I stuffed it in there to kind of steady this. We can shoot some Loctite foam in there later to lock it down. Um, so I think for good for now, I'm going to go ahead and cut some biceps. I've got uh, 8 inches measured out for his biceps and 10 inches for his forearm because I want a little bit of meat in there to, to do hands with so we have a little bit extra in his wrist. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all these pieces down. I'm going to go ahead and position his arms how I like them. And we're going to throw some hands on this guy. Okay, YouTube. So i got a uh, long neck here propped up on my uh, headless horseman stand so we can kind of work on them, keep them steady. For hands, I want to go ahead and use Spirit Halloween hands. These are the same ones from my Spider Hill uh, joint video. They are like $10 a pair. I got them for last year for clearance for 5 bucks. They make them in zombie gray or flesh color tan, which is awesome. 
So they come with a little thing, you just stab them in the ground. But they're awesome plastic hands, and again, plastic is the key. You don't want to put latex outside because it'll get destroyed eventually. So we get a lot of years out of this guy. So I just went ahead and simply cut the back off. And I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and put a screw in these. And I'm going to situate his hands, glue them in place. Or so, somehow I want to I want to have one hand down, the one hand out like he's reaching out of the ground, like pushing off and then reaching out. So I'm going to do his right hand up here, somewhere here. And I think I may even add another 90 to this end and then cock it in like this so his hand's kind of down and gimpy like when he got, looks like he was hung, like he was stretched out or something like that. So I want to put this hand sort of like gnarly and gimpy. And this hand I'll put a straight hand down to the ground. So I'll cut the back of this one, open it up, throw some screws through. We'll throw some foam in when I come back. We're going to start dressing this guy and distressing him because we're going to put some eyes in this guy, maybe some teeth. Uh, we're going to start working on those parts. Okay, YouTubes, I went ahead and just drilled and put self-tapping screws on long neck joints. Uh, his arms and hands still move. I got one little set screw under his little hand up here. So uh, his hands still move at the shoulders. So we can take his arms off to go ahead and dress him. And that's what I want to talk about next. Okay, YouTubes, so I went to the first shop on Half Price Off Day and got me a Sears Sucker Suit. We got a jacket and we got us a shirt in a light color. And I noticed there was a little tear in the armpit, so I asked the nice lady at the counter. I said, hey, nice lady at the counter. Uh, can I get a little bit more of a discount because there was a rip in the armpit and she's like, are you going to wear that to church? Church. And I said, well, that's what the jacket's for. The jacket's going to cover that. So she was like, I guess. So I got, I think, the shirt and the jacket for 4 or $5 together or something like that. So we're going to go ahead and lay these guys out. We're going to start distressing. We're going to get the rip dyes out. We're going to get the wood burner out. Let's do it. Okay, YouTube. So the first thing I like to do when I destroy a shirt, my favorite part, destruction, yes! I always take a pair of scissors and I cut all the hems off the shirt. So I got raggedy ends, uh, raggedy ends on where the buttons go, and the collar. Get rid of those. And then I love to do this, I take just a cheap old, uh, it's just a wood burning knife from uh, Hobby Lobby. And I like to take multiple fit rolls of the fabric and I just kind of wrap it in through there. And then let this thing burn through. You can see it's starting to smoke. So that way you do multiple holes and multiple layers and you get more done faster because otherwise you could be here all day just burning individual holes in this thing. And I'm really only worried about the front because that's probably the most you're going to see. But uh, that's okay, we'll just burn through anyways. So we hit about four, five layers right there. Got a hole in the shirt. So I'm going to go through and do the whole shirt just like that. You can see, whew, it's smoking good. All right, put that over here. And then I love to take just a wire brush or a curry comb and go over all my rips and tears and the fabric can try and put snags and stuff in it. And then also, because this is like, I like to the label, it's sateen. So it's like 67% uh, cotton and 33% polyester. Polyester shrinks like crazy with a heat gun. So let's fire this bad boy up and see how close we can get to it and see if we can knot up the fabric and make it all gnarly and nasty. I know it should work on the coat pretty good. But I definitely want to keep on all this and try and burn it a little bit and twist it up. Yeah, there it goes. It's starting to, we can see it's starting to twist up and get gnarly. And then I want to plug holes in this thing. Yeah, you can see it's already kind of bound up and got holes and it's already looking raggedy. And that's just from the heat gun. And then, of course, my last step, one of my favorites, is good old Rit dye. This is my own uh, stank uh, mix. It's a little bit of brown, a little bit of black, and some green in there. I'm going to go ahead and hit this whole shirt, make it filthy. I'm going to do the same thing to the jacket. I'm going to destroy it, and then we're going to get this guy dressed. Okay, YouTube. I went ahead and did a thing. I got the shirt all nasty and funky. Uh, I did go ahead and want a blowtorch over it and the jacket. Ran the heat gun. You can always take a little bit of uh, rusty red, which is basically a dirt brown color, and brown up the bottom of them things like he's been clawing his way out of the grave, just to add some paint, some extra layer of filth. So for now, I'm gonna set the shirt outside, hang it over the tree, let that dry, and move on to the jacket. So the jacket I kind of just pre-went over with the torch. This thing probably shrunk up from a 32 long to a 38 probably extra husky. So the polyester definitely wrinkled up pretty bad, which is great and awesome. So same thing. I've got a little bit of uh, brown paint. We can shoot at the bottom and make it look like he's been crawling his way out of the dirt. Get his sleeves real good. And we can also do this out in the graveyard when he's on the ground. Just to add another layer of color in him. And what I also like to do is use a little bit of bleach water. Anytime I shoot black, a little bit of bleach water. I like to do a little bit, little bit of bleach water because it gives them brown spots. It kind of takes the blackness out, puts a grime on it. And when it's outside, you don't have to smell the bleach. But yeah, the jacket, man, it's already good to go. 
We can add some more filth on once you get them dressed. Right now, I want to finish him up. So let us, we'll let his clothes go outside to dry, and we'll get back on long neck. Okay, YouTube, so I've got some uh, pinata inks. It's shadow gray. I wanted to bring his uh, flesh tone down to more of that gray color that's on his hands. Ain't got to be perfect, but I definitely wanted to kill the flesh tone to make it look like he's more of a undead zombie-like. He's been kind of rotten in the uh, earth for a while. So I figured I can try and alcohol stain this guy maybe. And if not, I'll go back and I'll use some paint. Uh, because it is plastic, that's the benefit of using plastic versus the um, uh, latex stuff in the graveyard. So, I don't know. I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. If I get a brush on a second coat, I'll brush on a second coat. And then we'll come back and take a look at him and see how far I got with him. Okay, YouTube. So, the wash definitely helped dirty him up. But uh, nowhere near the gray color. I went ahead and washed his hands, too. And I really like the color of the hands. So, my plan to get closer to the hands is now we're just going to dry brush some spray paint on him. So, I've got some just uh, Rust-Oleum 2X Flat Gray Primer. And I'm just going to spray some on the uh, old tablecloth here. and try and dry brush them and see if I can't get closer to that gray color. That's already better. And then I think I'm going to go back and then gray wash him again uh, to get down on all these little cracks and stuff. So I think this definitely grays him up and brings him closer, a lot closer to the hands. Okay, you too. So I went ahead and put another alcohol wash on him after dry brushing so he looks a lot closer to his hands. He's a lot darker and nastier. Uh, I definitely want to put some eyes in this guy. So you guys know, I like to use my go-to, my little half domes. And I got two that I picked out. And I went ahead and painted them sort of a light blue, because I want to do that gray, sort of like a diseased iris that most zombies and stuff have. So I'm going to E6000 these guys into place. And then uh, I'm going to go back and I'm going to touch up the center with gray and kind of just dab it under the same gray I put on his uh, body. And I also want to put some teeth on this guy. I love to use those uh, resin teeth to get on Amazon. I think they're called like uh, Efusura A. You get a whole box for like 12 or 13 bucks. So I think we give them a couple of teeth all super glue in there, maybe a few in the top, a few in the bottom, kind of sparse-like. Um, and then I think we can do our last couple of details and start getting this guy ready to get dressed. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock out his eyes and teeth. And uh, I wanna put a hangman's rope on this guy since he's got that long stretched out neck. We're gonna use some Rit Dye and Dye a rope and we're gonna leave that dangling off of him. Okay, YouTube, check out long neck now. Went ahead and glued his eyes with an E6000. Uh, I did crazy glue some of those teeth in. So those are drying. But I definitely want to gray out those centers of the eyes like a disease zombie eye. So I've got the same two gray, 2X gray primer I brushed him with. I'm going to spray a little bit on the uh, thing. I'll just dip into that. And I just want to paint some cloudy irises in there to kind of break up that, uh, that bright intense blue color. So he looks more of like a diseased, uh, burned out retina. I'm going to kind of dab it on. Do a little more on this side. I'm trying to work my way from the center out. I like to go back and just put a couple of little dots in so it looks like it's smeared or smudged. All right. So the last thing I think I want to do on him is probably put some yellow on those teeth. Uh, I did go ahead and work on the hands a little bit. I got some graveyard brown dirt on the bottom. I did paint his nails with an ivory color. So I figure I've got some uh, some Sculpt Nouveau yellow wax that works really great for like teeth and stuff like that. So for fingernails, I'm gonna use the same brush I used for his uh, eyes. I'm just gonna go ahead and dirty up his fingernails a little bit. On both hands. I think I'm going to let that dry for a little while, then I'll wipe it off. And I definitely want to hit them teeth. It's way too bright for us. I want to look like he's been underground for a while. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap those. And I might go back with some brown wax and go at the very root of them. I'll just dab that in. All right. So I'm going to knock out his other hand. And I think I'm going to do one more coat on his eyes. And I'm going to dab kind of over his eyes so they're nice and glossy. I'll dab kind of over his mouth. Maybe I'll even uh, do a little of uh, little perma blood inside his mouth. We'll see. Okay, YouTubes. So I got long neck uh, dialed in a little bit, a little bit of perma blood, and a couple of dots of white irises in his eyes. I think we're ready to dress this bad boy. I've got his uh, nasty old T-shirt we did, and then we'll have to run our arms up in the sleeve. So that's already grimy enough. We could always add some more uh, rit dye and everything else. So I can leave his arms uh, open. 
And I know you guys may be tempted before you start spray painting on this, hey, let's throw it back in the washing machine uh, to distress it more and get those little fine little frays. But don't, because these little things that come off and they'll clog up your washing machine. Trust me, I, I heard it on the internet. All right. All right, so I'll feed the sleeves through into his jacket. This here sucker suit, and I'll run his arms up. And uh, we'll put some arms on this bad boy. So before we go in the graveyard, I want to put some uh, Debcon on his teeth and his eyes, kind of whiten them up, gloss them, make them look nice and shiny. I'm just going to go ahead and mix it right in his mouth. All right, that'll work. I love this stuff. Uh, man, it's a glue. Not only is it a glue, it's waterproof. It makes it great for gloss. I know Distortions uses this stuff a lot for their uh, eyeballs and their mouths to make them look wet. So I'll put some on his teeth so this will help glue the teeth in. And then I'm going to go ahead and coat these eyeballs that I painted. Make them that nice, glossy, kind of fresh, dead look. And we can just use stuff right out of his mouth. Okay, YouTube, so I want to put a noose on Long Neck. I couldn't find any cow rope, but uh, they did have this cool nautical rope at the Dollar Tree, which I thought was pretty cool, and it'll work for our purposes. Uh, it's not brown, obviously, so I took some... Uh, old uh, stain I had that I did my shop walls in. It's just a bunch of rip dyes mixed together that busted open on me and got into the bottom of a barrel and it's sort of a dingy brownish gray black. So I think I'm just gonna dye the rope. So this is my own personal blend of stank right here. And again, it's just water and multiple rip dyes all wicked together. So I went ahead and I knocked out a little noose. I just put a knot in the bottom and I wrapped the rope around, put a couple of dabs of crazy glue. That should hold for our guy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and soak this thing in here till it turns brown. And then uh, I'll pull it out and let it dry. And then we can go ahead and hang this guy, man. I'm going to go ahead and put some moss on him, uh, get him ready for the graveyard. And next time we see uh, Long Neck, he's going to be in the graveyard. Oh, but first, we need this. Damn, it's raining. Game delay. Okay, YouTube's game on. We're going to use our uh, rebar stake. Let's go get long neck. Okay, YouTube, I got long neck. Again, got him bunched up in the back. We're just gonna slide his uh, hole right down over the rebar. Stab in the ground. All right, let's put his arms up. Oh, damn rain, hold off rain. Oh yeah, that nice gnarly position. Let's get his uh, clothes out. I did go ahead and I used some uh, uh, the five minute epoxy and I put some uh, some uh, moss on his shoulders. I put a little uh, cattail on his front pocket and some more moss. We got his hanging band noose hanging down. I did dust some greens and some a uh, couple of browns on him. So it looks like he's moss. Maybe he's been digging himself out. And I think I want to go ahead and add some boards to the ground too, like he's been clawing his way out of a coffin. So I've got some old uh, boards in the shed. I'm going to go get those. We'll put those in next. Okay, YouTube. So I got a couple of minutes of sunshine. I ordered my shed and I got some old boards. The rain actually helps soften the ground so we can hammer some boards in. Uh, these are the dog eared uh, fence boards I use to line my shop wall. So I just want to tap these guys in. I'm going to hammer a bunch in and make it look like he clawed his way out of here. And then uh, we'll take a look at him and we're going to take a look at him at night when the lights kick on. Alright guys, there's Long Neck. He's in the ground. He's just a single piece of uh, rebar. And we use less than six feet of PVC for this guy, a one inch PVC. You can see his little zip tie there holding his sleeve on. We did go ahead and debcon his eyes and his mouth to make him glossy. A little bit of writ dye. And a cheapo spirit hanging zombie that now we made a groundbreaker. And that's the Home Depot tombstone in the background, the one I did in my uh, Raptor Liner video. But I'm really happy with him. 
he looks gnarly. I got cattails plugged in the ground. You guys stay tuned. I'm gonna show you the uh, graveyard tour of the Halloween haunt. That's coming. But I love them overall. I love them, especially the eyes. All right, let's take a look at them at night. Okay, YouTubes, it is at night. I mean, we've had a hell of storms all day, a lot of rain. Poor uh, Lloyd, whatever he got in uh, Dead End Yarn Hot in Texas, once he got pushed this way, Lloyd, I feel your pain. We've got a ton of rain all day, like torrential downpour and winds. But we're outside, I got this guy lit up, and he is already drenched. That's what he looks like at night. It's pretty creepy. Give us a little close up. I like him. He'll do. Okay, YouTubes, that's our zombie groundbreaker. We took a spirit prop less than six feet of uh, plastic one inch PVC and made a groundbreaker out of them. You guys can use any old prop, you can use these if you got them, you can use a hard plastic mask and put a milk jug for a head. It don't take much, just some PVC pieces and a plastic head of some kind. Like I said, stay away from the latex, the latex and sun and the elements don't mix and you won't get very much use out of it. So I appreciate you guys watching and if you get a chance, go check out my brothers in the Trio of Terror, uh, Vic over at Monster Misfits and Dave at the Weird Kid Show. Guys, we do projects year round. It's always Halloween for us. We're always putting something out for you guys. Um, we just can't. We just can't do enough, man. So uh, until I see you guys again, man. Thanks for watching. Keep it evil. What the hell? Ah, oh, son of a bitch.